Okay, uh, I was. <laughs> it's been quite a while since we made a video. Had a new project going on. I looked at my blog just a minute ago, and the last one we did was back in July, where we did uh, finding here. We did this head here, and if I remember correctly, it just fell off there. Oops, a cigarette. I said we were going to do something with this guy. Well. As happens around here a lot of times, things just seem to build up and other things seem to start out and that's what happened here. We'll get to this, this guy eventually. But I thought being as uh, this coming weekend, Saturday is Veterans Day and I'm a veteran and I know a bunch of you guys out there, if not the majority of them, are veterans too. I did a little carving of uh, a World War II soldier a long time ago and it was really popular so I thought well why don't we just do that again being as it's going to be Veterans Day here day after tomorrow and I'm myself and my son are heading down to Tulsa tomorrow to be in to be in the Tulsa Oklahoma Veterans Day parade riding with my brother and his hot rod it's going to be a lot of fun we did that last year so I thought what we'd do is uh, do sort of a Willie and Joe uh, carving. Now I printed these two pictures off to give an idea of you know where we're heading here. And if you looked at my Facebook page or at the past uh, carving I did. Yeah show up a little better. This is one I did, well I carved a helmet yesterday and uh, I had a head laying around which worked out pretty good so I thought well why don't, that's where I got the idea, let's just do a video of making a soldier. This is just a body stopper base that I made oh quite a few years back. Uh, if you go on the blog and look over there on the right down there in the, uh, what do they call it? The, Oh, I can't think of what it is. Where all the words are, just look down through those words to uh, find body bottle stopper, and that'll show you how to make these, uh, how to cut the glass and everything to make these bottle stoppers. You can see they're all over my desk here. Uh, working on a couple of new ones over here. One I haven't painted, one I just started. And uh, right now I've you know, you go through these phases. I was very really hot on bottle stoppers there for a while, and uh, then just stopped making them, even though they were really popular. But uh, anyway, you can use this head that we're going to make for a bottle stopper, or you can use it for a bust, or if you want to get real ambitious, you could actually use it for a full figure. But what we're going to do, we're just going to start out making the head and we'll take it from there afterwards. So, when I was up in Dayton just a few weeks ago I bought a bunch of these three inch uh, basswood blanks. They're not that expensive. This one costs five dollars and fifty-five cents. This is from Heineke Wood Products up there in uh, Minnesota. Can't beat this wood. It is just it's a pleasure to carve it. And I've been carving it for years and I'll hopefully be carving it for quite a few years more. Anyway, I printed this off as something to go by, but also to see, you know, how to make that helmet. And that's the first thing we're going to make. And here's how I duplicated this helmet design. This beak or bill on the front of that helmet is just a little large. In these helmets here you can see it's not that large. Well that's what we're going after. So what I did was I took this block and this block works just out perfectly for a head about this size here. Okay and uh, later on we'll do this head second after we do the helmet get that thing worked out. So what I did was I just got my compass and I put it on here and using the whole block 
I just drew a line around here like that and then just freehanded, you know, adding the, the, the lip bill for, for the helmet. And then I turned it around to get the back angle with the same radius on the thing and drew another circle and then again just freehanded it to get that. Now what I want to do here is I want to put a mark here and I want to put a mark here directly beneath that point where the compass was. This is, this is different than what I did to make that helmet up there. And I'm going to draw a line across here. Now when I first started doing this blog, the purpose was to, uh, you know, not show you how to do everything. Well, I mean to show you how to do everything, but not, you know, make it too easy for you. I'm not going to, I don't sell rough outs. I want you to learn things sort of like how I learned them. I'll show you how, but it's going to be up to, it, up to you to figure out yourself how you're going to do it, if that mean, makes any sense to you. Now, the reason I put that there is right here is I'm going to drill a big hole about the same size of this guy's head, which will be about like that. Maybe just a little smaller. Make it a little smaller. About like that right there. Okay. Oops. I lost my circle there. That's what you get when you use a compass that you probably used in grade school. There we go. Now I'm going to drill a hole just Oh, maybe about that deep here and that will be where uh, his head goes up into the top and the reason I made those two marks is I want to be able to uh, get that head centered exactly in there like I did this one here okay and that allows me to do that so now what I'm going to do is go find a, probably try using a Forstner bit. That's a bit that drills a large hole with a flat bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go try to find that right now. Okay, this is a one and a half inch Forstner bit. As you can see, it's kind of a different kind of drill bit than uh, what you might be used to. But it, what it does is it drills a flat hole. The, the larger they get, the more unwieldy they become. So with a wood clamp here, I've clamped it in, clamped that block into this wood clamp, clamp to really give me something secure to hang on to as I drill that hole, okay? So I just put this in there. Now you if you don't have these, you can, you know, get the biggest drill you've got and drill a pilot hole, just not very deep, you don't want it very deep. And then you'll just have to work the rest with a knife and a gouge, okay? So, turn the light on here so I can see what's going on. Let's see what happens here. you a, a nice flat bottom hole in there all right and that's about as deep as we want to go we'll probably end up cutting it a little deeper once we get the head uh, done to match it up there okay
So now we'll head back over to the bandsaw, which is the next step. Now I've drawn on, as I've shown you, I've drawn on here the two profiles. So what I'm going to do now is cut these two profiles out and I'm going to try to leave my cutout pieces on this blank so I always have a square surface to work from when I'm running through my saw. Okay, I just bought me some brand new bandsaw blades from uh, Timberwolf and again these are 3 16th inch blades with four teeth per inch, skip tooth they call them, and for a general all-purpose blade this is the one you want to buy. Uh, you can just call them up if you have an odd shape uh, blade length for your bandsaw they will make them to fit and uh, they cost a little more but they last a long time and you just cannot beat them for cutting things. So here we go, we'll cut out this first profile first, okay? And just looking at it, I think what I want to do is start this way. Now this is what I mean, I don't want any of these chips to fall off, so I left it connected right up there at the top. I start down here and not to cut and not up here well as I break these things off I want them to break away from the piece if I started up here and come down here I could easily snap off you know this bill because it is really fragile so what I'm going to do now because it's really not that important is go ahead and cut this piece off Take this now, I can just bend it up like that. Bend that up like that. Bend that. Bend that. And there's our helmet. Okay? Now all we have to do is round it. Now if I wanted to get real, uh, real brave, I could have drawn a circle on the bottom of this and allowed for that beak and done it that way, but you know, I think that's trying uh, trying something <coughs> just a little bit too far. Kind of looks like a German helmet, doesn't it, with a little top knot on there. So, let's head off over to the carving stick. Okay, got her cut out and immediately noted a mistake. It's not really a mistake. Like I say, this is a learning process, and if I hadn't done this before, I'm learning too. When I cut the bottom off, I noticed the curve of the, uh, the helmet here, when I drilled my hole, <laughs> it just matched exactly the, the <coughs> curve up there. I was hoping it was deeper, but it's not. But I'm not worried about it. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass and put it right in there. And starting back here, line that up.
switch that on. I'm trying to figure out what exactly happened here. I didn't goof up. We'll find out. Like I always say, if I make a mistake, you're going to see them too. Okay, now, I'm going to take off those corners. And remember, when you're taking off a corner, it's just like carving a boot. You know, take it off from the sole. So that's what we're going to do here. We're taking it off. Taking it down to that point right there. Well, it's nice brass wood. If you carve from the top down, you're going to end up splitting beyond your line, and you don't want to do that. So, always carve from the bottom up, and then that won't happen. Oh, there we go. All right, now let's. leave my uh, bill pretty thick down here because if I just took off try to carve it thin in the beginning it would chip off I know it's already thin here so I'm going to be very careful about what I do there tell you, doing this helmet, it takes a while to get the exact shape you want because when I was doing that helmet there, I had to go back several times to uh, get it to where it looked exactly like it was supposed to. Button up on top there. It's really fun riding in the parade. I'll be sitting with my brother in his Miata 
with top down. All these people standing along the edge of the route, waving at you, telling you thanks for your service. It's really nice. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now because of this blade is too wide to make these turns, I switched over to this knife here. And as you're making these cuts, instead of just barreling in like that, if you slide your knife in a little like that, see how I did that? It makes it just a little easier. Yeah, she's starting to look like a helmet. Another good thing about the parade is all these restaurants in town are giving all the veterans free meals. So after the parade's over, we're going to head off somewhere and have a nice lunch at some kind restaurant. getting there. See, it's looking pretty good. It uh, There's something that just don't look right, and I think it's this back nip. Front's okay, it's just that back one. Just don't look right.
Let's see what we got here. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to make these ridges a little deeper. off quite a bit here in front to make that lip more pronounced. That's about right. There's a problem right here. Problem right here. That's looking pretty good. The reason I'm using this gouge back here is because if I tried to make that turn because of the grain, it would split off a big chunk here, so I can't do that. I can do it up front, but I can't do it back in the back here. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so this is the front. So, because my hole is shallow, what I'm going to have to do is just work this down.
until I can cut me a hole in here. Not a deep hole, just a That'll show you about how deep that hole is, okay? All right, you can see that. That'll allow his head, when we cut the top of his head off, to go up in there and you get that, uh, the look, just like with a cowboy hat, of this hat actually sitting down on top of his head, which is why doing it this way really looks nice okay so I'm going to continue doing that and then we'll come back because we pretty much have the helmet uh, finished the only thing that needs to be done with it besides scooping out that area that, there is once you get it or get it uh, to the shape you want What I did was come back and uh, I don't want big chips so I came back with that one there and just did this. Just real lightly go around and knock off those chips, the corners of the chips. Really nothing more than that. get that just kind of pebbly looking finish. All right. So in the next video, I'll have this hole rimmed out. The hat, the hell, hell, hat, it's not really a hat, is it? Will be basically finished. You could still, still have a little taken off the sides to get that really round and Rounded look. This is what I mean. You just have to go back until you get the thing to look exactly like you want it. And that's exactly like I want it. I don't know if you could see it. You can. See how much more rounded this side is there? than it is here. You probably can't see it like I can, but believe me, it is. So. There, that looks a lot better. Okay, if you got a dent or two in your helmet, if you know Bill Malden when he drew these cartoons, if you're familiar with them, and if you're not, just go go to Google and type in Willie and Joe cartoons, and then hit the image button, and there are hundreds of them, and they're they're really funny. He was just a tremendous cartoonist back during the Second World War, and. Uh, he was really a morale booster with his cartoons. All different situations those two guys were in. So, there we got our helmet done, looking pretty good. It's a little bit larger than that one there, but that's no problem. <coughs> but it'll look good once it gets, where's the front of it? Once it gets mounted on top of the guy. Okay. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.